Good morning, everyone. So um, I have two of my um, personal heroes here, you know, Sifu Rambaliki, and we have um, Sensei Richard Norton. And uh, so I wanted to ask you, gentlemen, if you would, um, to talk about a little bit about aging. Not that you guys have aged at all. I, I get this question a lot. Now. But uh, what are you and, saying? And, yeah. What are you saying? Yeah, what are you no, to just, say? just generally talking about how can that be relevant to us? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Well, this is for you. you. You're talking to other people that are aging, not necessarily. Oh, okay. Yeah. But um, um, how to how to train smart? How to train for a long term? And what's the secret about if there's a secret about both of you guys lasting as long as you have in such great shape, and at the same time you, your mind being so clear and everything. So. If any of you guys want to start? Well, that's a presumption right there that we have clear minds. Uh, you, you know, one of the things that I, that I, it, it, automatically I thought I went back to is I remember when I was fighting a long, long time ago in, in the 80s and 90s, there was a couple guys that I was training with, and it was almost like, you know, come on, Ron, harder, 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 and, and, and they were just taking so much thumping in their training. And I remember my sensei, always telling me, save it for the ring, get the damage in the ring, not here. And a lot of those guys that I've known back then are so punch drunk now, I don't know if you've, I'm sure you've seen a lot of that too, to where they've just damaged themselves to where they, they've, you know, degraded so much over time. And I, I, I went through like this personal thing back then thinking, Maybe I'm not doing this right because they're, I thought they had the answer. They were just going harder, harder, harder. But then I started to see that erosion of them and I started thinking, no, 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 I think I handled this the right way because I wanted longevity and I didn't want to erode like that. I don't know if you've seen that or if you felt that or if you trained that way at any point in your career. I think, I think the key is what you just said. The problem, problem, I don't know whether to call it a problem, that I think a lot of competitive martial artists have is that their whole focus is on the competitive aspect. And unfortunately, there's, that will only last so long. Age is a, is a factor that will affect your ability to compete, you know? And, and I, I, even in Australia, I used to see that all the time, not just as a martial artist, but in other sports, whether it's football, it's cricket, it's all these famous people, you'd get them on, camera at some stage after their competitive careers as commentators and their stomachs are out here and they put on all this weight. In other words, it was a very short focus span they had of their careers in their given sports. And I think for martial arts, we, we've seen this all the time. In hindsight, we've seen so many champions who, for some reason, think that competitiveness and that ability to be the best is going to last forever and it just can't right. you know so it gets down i think to just being smart we have to train smarter and harder if we want longevity and i would ask you you said well you wanted longevity why like to well, what end i mean to the end i wanted longevity i don't i yeah but but you know what i'm saying and i already know the answer to that meaning I think, and I always try to say this to our peers, that with someone with your experience and your knowledge, not just as competitor, as a teacher in all aspects of, of knife, of combat and everything else, the value of you having longevity is you get to pass on your knowledge oh. for year after year after year, long be beyond when you're able to get into the ring and actually compete with these younger guys. But your ability to impart that knowledge and make those younger ones better uh, is what it's all about, I think, you know? No, I see that, yeah. yeah it, but, but on the selfish point, I never wanted martial arts to be out of my life. And I thought if I damage myself, damage myself, it's going to come a point where I've got to back off. And, and I really... No, exactly. I I, yeah. yeah. But yeah. that's what I mean. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if, if where is in, this is where ego comes in, you know, ego's always been a sort of an unknowing sort of through point of martial arts is, is getting rid of the ego, becoming egoless. In other words, mm -hmm. that I have to be able to beat every one of my students, I have to be better than everybody else. And I've often said that if, if, if I'm, say, 40 years old and I open up a school and I have a whole class of 20-year-olds, being the constant that we all keep training, they keep training and I keep training, there's a point where every one of those students will beat me. Mm -hmm. Age will dictate that. I mean, I'll be 80 and I'll still be 50 or 40 or whatever. Yeah. So we have to be okay with that. But again, 
I think the longevity for us in training smarter and, and avoid getting ourselves so jacked up and so messed up that we can't even train ourselves, let alone be in a position to actually get on the mat and pass knowledge on to those younger students. Yeah. I think that's the key. Yeah. And uh, it, it's a hard thing to get to. I mean, you know, Ron, our, our egos kick in. Oh, yeah. We, we want to be like we were 30 years ago. And... And again, age dictates us. That's not necessarily possible, but... I'll have that good day, and then the next day I'm like, oh, my God, what did I do? You know, but that's... Yeah. You're right. You're going to have that... I mean, everything erodes a bit. And, and I always remember my father-in-law telling me, he goes, Ron, learning, you're going up that ladder, up that ladder, up that ladder. By the and, way, and uh, Ron's father-in-law is the legendary Dan Innocento. Yeah, and uh, <clears throat> he said it's going to get to a point where the growth is there and then you're going to start to decline now if you stop training you're going to plummet if you keep training it's a slow decline and you should be able to do this for life but he always gets on me he goes do i don't care what you do but just do something yep every day otherwise you will lose it and it's hard to come back at you know and i like to think i'm not that old i'm 54 now but it's different for me now I see a difference if I slack off for a week or a month and then I got to come back and it's, I don't know if it's that way for you, but I'm, I'm sure it is. And, it, you know, back on Inosano for one second, when I met him, I was just, I was almost 18 years old. I was 17 years old when I met him. And he get, after I got to know him, he gave me the talk. He's like, how old are you? And I, at the time I go, I think I'm, you know, close to 20 or something like that. By the time he goes, wait till you're 25 or 30. This is what's going to happen. Then when I got that, he goes, how old are you? I go, I'm 30. He goes, wait till you're 40. This is going to happen. He gives, gives, keeps giving me these talks every 10 years. And I hate the talk because he's telling me how the erosion is going to go. <laughs> and, and, but, but he's right. But he's also giving me answers on there's still life beyond that. And, and I mean, I look at you and you're still a force and what you're doing and whatever you're doing. I mean, I want to do it. I, I don't know what kind of just drugs. Good yeah, drugs. yeah. Better living through modern chemistry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's a, a part of it too. Is just we're better into health. I, I look at the way I'm aging compared to my father, <clears throat> and my father, you know, he, he passed away now. But you know, it, it was a different diet, different exercise, and he wasn't a lazy man. He was active, but it's changed. And I think that because of knowledge, time, everything that all the information that we have now. We kind of know the answer on how to do these things if we really want the answer. Yeah, you well, learn anything the best thing about age is wisdom. It's a gaining of wisdom. And and thankfully, you're the same as me. We never stop like looking, trying to look for answers, you know, whether it's yeah. on diet, new ways of eating, fasting, <clears throat> which is aside from actually training hard uh, and smart on, on the mat and everything like that. And... It's just getting all that knowledge, but that's once again, you know, what you said about uh, Sifu Dan, passing on that, that's our job now, you know. Yeah. It's, not, it's not to be the toughest, it's to be smarter and be able to sort of educate those younger people about the obstacles they're going to run into that are created from age or whatever it is, or injuries and how to overcome those obstacles. I think that's the thing, but, I mean, what you said for me, I just, you know, luckily... My wife is a vegetarian, so you know we eat quite simply and everything. I'll, I'll still eat meat, but we're pretty much fish eaters and yeah. salads and all that sort of stuff. I take supplements. I always try to find in, uh, find out what the cutting edge is as far as the scientific explanation of the best things to eat and not eat and the supplements and everything else. Because as you know, that changes all the time. But but you have to do that. I mean, you have to be a doer. You can't expect to age and not actively do things that are going to in improve your quality of life as we get older. Yeah. And as I said, getting, you know, relating that back to martial arts, I mean, I don't... When I said about ego, I just want to be okay. I'm okay that I don't have to be able to kick somebody in the head anymore. Or I'll kick them in the body or I'll kick them in the leg. Mm -hmm. But I do know that I can teach a younger student how to kick somebody sure. in the head same as you would be with so many of the techniques you, you do and I just find being a, more of an elder statesman is actually quite freeing where you're not the gunslinger on the mat that everybody's going to try and knock off yeah. and I've said once before that I did a, a seminar a grappling seminar because you know I've been doing Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for what 28 30 years now with the Machado brothers and 
you know, I try and pass on guys, do not get into these suicide matches every time, mm -hmm. you know, where it's like uh, this and here. I said, you may last two years, three years, five years, come and see me. Let me know how you feel then, you know. It's about enjoying the art and, as you said, looking for the longevity in what you do. Because I said to one young kid that, you know, he was all gassed up. I said, how old are you? And he said, oh, 22. I said, do you realize if you tap me out, you've just tapped out your grandfather? <laughs> you know, and age-wise, that's yeah. what it would have been. I'm 67 now, you know, as a 22-year-old. And I said, worse still, what if I kick your ass? How are you going to feel? So I was just trying to say, look, just look at the relevance sure. and, and the validity of this competitive aspect, especially against older people in the class, which brings me back to the final point of ageing. The, the message I would pass on to so many students is be aware of that, you know, in, in your environment, on the mat and everything. Age matters, you know, there are factors that matter with physical disabilities or not having the same levels and everything. Be aware, be, be very cognizant of your partner and their longevity in the art yeah. and don't just make it an ego match where you have to be the one that is dominant every time you get on. Help each other, as you said, get some longevity in the art. So. Yeah, I think it's smart. Mm -hmm. Amazing advice. It, it, it's like a, I remember lifting and wanting to be able to be the guy who benched the most. Now I'm like just happy to get 100 pounds going, you know. And it, but it, I'm not. I'm looking at them, and it's not like I think I'm letting go of the ego a little bit as I get older. That's and you have the to. key. Yeah. That's the key. So. Letting go of that ego. And again, I, we're not saying that is easy. It's yeah. not easy, but yeah. I think the older we get and the longer we stay in the arts, we the more you accept that that's okay. You do not have to be the toughest on the mat. you got to right. remember, too, just because the bull pulls his horns in doesn't mean he doesn't have horns. So you can always bring him back <laughs> exactly. out if you need it. So, yeah. yeah. Well, thank you, gentlemen, for uh, yeah. sharing the, the wisdom with everybody. And I definitely hope when I get to the age that you guys are, I'll be looking at <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you hurt Get me. out of here. <laughs> thank you, thank you so Go much. get your cane and come over here. Yeah, really. <laughs>